You've made that point five times already. I don't okay. know what you have time oh for. Let God, me for, explain For the love myself. of God, let me finish a sentence, man. I don't, maybe you're not used to women talking. I don't know. But I'd like to finish a sentence, sir. I'd, even if you are a biased journalist, there are, you still have to maintain a decorum. You cannot behave like a street thug. Port Israel. The 30,000 30, kids that have been murdered, do you support that? Right. Have you shed a single tear for what's been happening to the Palestinian people? No. So there is this woman called Julia Hartley Brewer who works for Talk TV. You know Talk TV and their propaganda. We have all seen in the Gaza conflict. So we know it very much. The P.S. Morgan, the chap is also associated with the same platform. So you know the quality of journalism that these guys would be showcasing. The reason why I'm talking about this woman called Julia is that uh, her journalism has been um, questionable. I mean, I have been following her. I've had the chance to follow her uh, accidentally um, because of this uh, Gaza, Gaza uh, uh, conflict. And there was this famous interview that she did with uh, one of the Palestinian uh, lawmakers, uh, Mustafa Bargoti. Um, that interview in particular had attracted more than 17,000 complaints to the Ofcom and yet Ofcom decided to not investigate that matter. That's how low the Ofcom has sunk into. I mean, as I said in my uh, one of my earlier videos that I have given uh, two TED Talks and both in both TED Talks, TEDx Talks, I have uh, praised the... Um, the functioning of uh, the media watchdog in this country, which is Ofcom and how, you know, it has uh, um, its intervention has seen the improvement in the journalistic standard in this country. Unfortunately, I can't say the same thing about uh, Ofcom anymore because Ofcom has become uh, just one of those many failed institutions. That's a sad development, but that has happened. So this lady's program, that interview, you have to watch that interview. I mean, I, I can give you the health warning that watch it at your own risk. You know, this lady gets uh, um, accused of being racist and Islamophobe. But the purpose of uh, recording this video is not to discuss whether she is racist or Islamophobe or not. That's for her to you know, respond to those accusations that she continues to face on social media. The reason why I am recording this video is, as you know, one of the things that we do uh, from on this channel is to highlight the shortcomings of mainstream media and their editorial ethics. Now, there have been few incidences and I thought I have ignored her enough. It's time that, you know, she gets my attention. As somebody who has spent... Uh, you know, more than 25 years in active journalism with 12 years in the BBC at fairly senior level. I find her journalism quite repulsive, quite nauseating. I don't know where she has taken her journalism training from, but I think she needs to get a new crash course. You know, let's focus on three particular episodes. So first one was where she interviewed the um, uh, Palestinian parliamentarian, Mustafa Bargoti. Just watch this interview. You say you don't approve And of do you think that Israel is a democratic country? I Netanyahu know is that Israel is a democracy. They have elections. No, this man is now, uh, has three, four courts against him because yes. of four cases of I know. corruption. This man knows okay. if the war we have, stops, we haven't got time to, to do the entire history of Benjamin Netanyahu, what, who is not is a popular not figure in Israel. This I, is, this is, I'm not, I'm not here to defend Benjamin Netanyahu. Mustafa, is it whenever, possible to? Whenever I speak, right? Whenever I speak about Palestinian rights or no. Palestinian situation, you you claim it is history. I'm talking about what's happening today. No, I know, and this I'm is trying. not history. Can we? Can we? <laughs> just... You you <laughs> said, you talked about how you don't want Israel, Israel. You're saying Israel that October the seventh happened. You're placing that in historical context. I understand that. Please don't say that again. We don't have time for it. You've made that point five times already. I don't okay. know what you have time for. Oh my for. God! For, for the love sense. of God, let me finish a sentence, man. I don't, maybe you're not used to women talking. I don't know, but I'd like to finish a sentence, sir. Anyway, 
So, no, you are misleading the public now really? by claiming right. I've got 20 seconds left. I'm not even going to bother trying and to answer. Um, if you don't think Israel's reaction is acceptable, what would have been an acceptable reaction to you? You've got 10 seconds left. To end occupation and allow peace to prevail for both people. That's very brilliant. Yeah. Sorry to have you know, been a woman speaking to you. But... So you can see, I mean, you don't have to be a seasoned journalist to understand, uh, to find out what, how many things were wrong in this interview. I mean, she came across as a bully and also somebody who despised Palestinian. Maybe because of their color, maybe because of their religion. This religion thing will become important when I showcase the third example about her journalism and journalistic ethics. You can understand the relevance of this eye mentioning religion of Mustafa Bargoti, who is a Muslim. More recently, she interviewed one of the protesters who uh, is, uh, I think, um, uh, who is an Oxford student. You remember the video that we showed you that a group of pro-Palestinian protesters spraying red pens um, at the uh, headquarters of Labour Party, symbolizing that they have the bloods of uh, Palestinians on their hands. Now, one of the protesters who is, who is a student was interviewed by this uh, woman called Julia. Now, in the course of the int interview, she goes on to say that, yes, she is a proud supporter of Israel. She says that, right? I mean, it's no longer a taboo. It's become a fashionable to support a Zionist regime which kills people for fun, which has just massacred more than 33,000 people, with 17,000 being, you know, toddler babies. And yet, it's become a quite an, a badge of honor for people like Julia to say that, yes, we support this Zionist regime. Now, that wasn't the uh, only you know, sad aspect of that interview. In that interview, the, the guest who is a student also asked Julia whether she has shed any tears on the death of those 33,000 people. She says no. Now, you don't have to be anybody's supporter. I may not like Israeli regime, but to say that, you know, you don't shed a tear on the death of 33,000 people and counting, it shows the kind of person that you are. I don't have to judge her. She's saying that she hasn't shed tears on the death of those 33,000, you know, innocent people. Okay, by her logic, there may have been, uh, you know, let's say thousands and thousands of um, Hamas fighters. But there may have been few, one or two maybe, one or two innocent people. The fact that you, it doesn't move you, if the death of even one or two Palestinian or innocent person doesn't move you, says a lot about the person that you are. That's number two. Watch this video. My next guest, because joining me right now, is an activist at Youth Demand, Chiara Sarti. Uh, good morning to you. What was the point of this protest yesterday? So I think today we're in agreement, Julia, that the like politicians in this country, we have no trust in them whatsoever. So we are demanding an arms embargo on Israel and we are demanding an end to new oil and gas. Why do you have to resort to breaking the law and vandalism and criminal damage um, to make your point? Well, the fact of the matter is that the law is already being broken because genocide is illegal. Well, I know, I know people opinions. your age struggle with the difference between those two things, but fact and opinion are not the same thing. Yeah, the civil service has threatened to walk out. Oh, well, if, if, the, oh, well, if the civil service have. And some members of the civil service who don't understand their job have threatened to walk out, yes? Again, doesn't make genocide yeah. a fact. You can be as concerned about this as, as you clearly are, and many in your group are. I do wonder, though, why, why uniquely is the concern for people in, Pal in Gaza? Well, if you give me one hour on your show, we could do the tour of the world and talk about all the different ways in which we're bombing starving people. How the homes in, in Gaza have been bombed in the last six months mm -hmm. is beyond description. Like, it's, it's a total violation of every single human value. If you're not on the, on the streets with us, you basically have no values whatsoever. Okay, so I haven't got on the streets to demonstrate against this, so I have no values. Yeah. 
I would argue that what happened on October the 7th, just, uh, just over six months ago, was the, a heinous, horrific uh, massacre by Hamas uh, forces and that Israel has a right of self-defence. Yeah, I don't think that four-year-olds are fighting Hamas war for them, so we maybe shouldn't bomb them. You don't, say you don't support this, right? No, don't support what? What, what Israel has been doing to no, the No, I do support people. Israel. I don't support all of their individual actions, but I do support, okay. I do support Israel's The 13,000 13, kids that have been murdered, do you support that? Right. Have you shed a single tear for what's been happening to the Palestinian people? No. I think, you know, these people need to be taught that journalism uh, is not about being a bully. The art of interviewing is not about being a bully uh, just because uh, your ideological um, uh, feelings get hurt. The whole idea, even if you are a biased journalist, there are, you still have to maintain a decorum. You cannot behave like a street thug. Unfortunately, these people, they don't understand. They can't distinguish. They think what they are in their real life um, is what they need to act as. Uh, when they appear on screen. But that's a fallacy. That's not journalism. Whether you're doing objective journalism or biased journalism, you still have to conduct yourself with some sense of respectability. Which, if you look at these two interviews, shows that this woman has failed to do that. Now, that's, these are the two interviews. Now, there's a third episode that has happened, which is quite a, a dangerous episode. So yesterday, if you, have, if you were following the news development, you may have seen that there was an attack in a shopping mall in Sydney, in Australia. And the person who was going about stabbing people uh, indiscriminately killed six people. Now, it took some time. It took several hours for New South Wales police in Australia to conclude who the attacker was. The attacker was killed on the spot, but it took them sometimes to find out you know who the person was were, and and his motive and his family members and whatnot but this woman julia it took her few seconds to conclude that it was a terror attack it was another terror attack by another islamist and how she linked that to uk that it is australia today it was france the other day it's only a matter of time before we all in this country in the uk you know face the same similar consequences so she took just few seconds to conclude that the attacker was a muslim so therefore demonize the entire five million plus population of this country now you can imagine the impact given the polarized world that we live in we all have children going to school without any security or safety the reach of her tweet which has gone into millions now. You can see that on screen. You know, it, is, it becomes a nice weapon for white supremacist or any Islamophobe to take a screenshot, circulate it widely on WhatsApp, and then that becomes a motivation for them to go and kill innocent Muslims in this country. Now, it took her a few seconds to conclude that he was a Muslim and he was an Islamist guy. Now, Australian police several hours later said that A, he was not Muslim and B, there was no ideological motive behind this attack. I can tell you that a 40-year-old man from Queensland, Joel Couchy, has been identified as the offender in this matter. Uh, we are continuing investigations in relation to him. He is a man, as I said, from Queensland. We believe he came to New South Wales uh, last month. Uh, we are and have spoken with his family, will continue to do so, and they are cooperating with us. We know that shortly after coming to Sydney, he uh, took possession of a storage facility that has been identified, and we have worked through that very small storage facility. As I had said last night, there is still, to this point, nothing that we have uh, no information we have received, no evidence we have recovered, no intelligence that we have gathered that would suggest that this was driven by any particular motivation, ideology or otherwise. So obviously everybody started asking her to A, delete the tweet and apologise. 
it took her 24 hours, almost 24 hours to issue a clarification to say, oh, that tweet was incorrect. Still no apology, by the way. That's the height of shamelessness. That shows her motive, original motive. Original motive that shows was prim primarily to demonize Muslims. So she issues a clarification tweet, no apology, and she refuses to delete the original tweet. So just imagine, original tweet's reach continues to grow in millions. So clearly the original motive was to spread this fake news, to vilify Muslims, to demonize Muslims and endanger their safety in this country. How frightening is that? And when she issues the clarification, she issues the clarification by quoting the original tweet and in the comment section of her new tweet. Not in the comment section of the original tweet. She's very clever. I posted two tweets tagging Met Police. And in one tweet, I tagged um, uh, Sadiq Khan as well and the Home Office saying that I have four children and her tweet is going to endanger the safety of my children. Unfortunately, till date, I haven't received any response from either Met Police or Sadiq Khan or Home, Home Secretary. Home Secretary is so nimble-footed. If a Jewish person says anything, he's so nimble-footed that he personally intervenes. But in this case, he hasn't. It's a question of 5 million plus people in this country and their safety because of the, you know, uh, very dangerous Islamophobic and racist tweet by this woman. And yet no action has been taken. So whilst I'm not going to discuss whether she is a racist or Islamophobe, that's for you to find out, you know, from her tweets or from her conduct, both on air, off air. All I'm saying is that her conduct as a journalist has been very questionable. Her argument was that, oh, it took her 20 hours because she had better things to do with her family members. I didn't realize that she, she had family members. I, I'm, I mean, good luck to people, you know, who, who live with her. Up until that time, I didn't know that she had a family. But then that can't be an excuse. You have spread fake news. And very dangerous fake news, which can have serious ramifications on the millions of people living in this country. Now, it doesn't take long for you to just delete that tweet. But if your motive was not good, hence your refusal to delete that tweet. So I thought, you know, it's I'm, I'm presenting everything in front of you. I have a lot to say, but I wouldn't say that. It's for you to form your opinion. I have tagged her in both my tweets. She has not responded. Let's see if she wants to respond to this video. I would be more than happy to have her on my show and interview her. I give this platform. I, this is an open invitation to her to talk about both her journalism, questionable journalism, and as well as, you know, this dangerous uh, uh, act that she has indulged in on social media by vilifying and demonizing Muslims. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways that you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.